terms of affordable housing. Chairman. Chairman. The Honourable Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Chairman, I welcome the opportunity to debate part three that's been put forward by the Labor opposition on this bill because it exposes for everybody to see what a bunch of flakes they are when it comes to housing policy. You see, what this bill says is that if we just simply pass a bill that says that 10,000 affordable houses will be built each year, whammo! Magically, it's going to happen. That's all you need to do. It's sort of like, you know, we could pass a bill through the House and say, let's pass a bill that says everybody have a job. Let's pass another bill. Everybody be cured and everybody be healthy. That is the sum total intellectual grunt of the Labour opposition is a magical one-page SOP that suddenly is going to get 10,000 houses a year built. It is laughable, Mr Chairman. And what is so contradictory is when we had the first part of this bill that would actually have some land to build houses, oh, they're all opposed to that. They don't want us fast-tracking the land planned process to get the houses built. And then when we come to say, well, actually, we think we should use some vacant crown land to build the houses, oh, no, 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 no. The Labour Party says you can't do that. All you've got to do is magically pass this three, this part, and you'll get 100,000 homes built. Well, here's some news for the opposition. The number of new homes that's being built is growing at the fastest rate on record since 1922. Since 1922. No, no, let me just take Mr Little through it. In each of the last four years, Mr Little, each of the last four years, Residential investment has grown by more than 20 per cent per year. 20 per cent in 2012, another 20 per cent on top of that in 13, another 20 per cent on 14, and then 15. Here's a challenge from Mr Little. Tell me four straight years ever in the last century that you've had more than 20 per cent compound growth in residential construction. Tell me ever. 1974, he says. Well, let's get the data. I've got it in front of me. In 1974, under the Kirk Rowland government, when inflation was running at 15% and they offered mortgages at 3%, you had one year in which house booming boomed and then the country was paying the bills for it for the next 10 years if the Mr Little's model of a failed government is the 72 to 75 government, man, I want to be telling the electorate that, because the financial damage that was done at that time was a debacle. It was a one-year boom, and it bust the following year. What's different is this is a sustainable housing program. This is a program that's seen growth year after year, four years in a row, and independent programs show that in the next three years, the next three years, will be record levels of building in Auckland to the point that a Whangarei, a city the size of Whangarei, is being built in this term of parliament, and in the next term of parliament there will be another. You see, here's the problem. When it comes to RMA reform, the Labour Party is opposed. When it comes to offering first-home buyers the help in getting a deposit with Homestart, they're opposed. When it comes to fast-tracking a new unitary plan for Auckland, they're opposed. When it comes to reform of the social housing sector, I actually don't know whether they're for or against, because one minute Mr Twyford's in favour, the next minute that he is against. Actually, every member of this House knows that part one and two of this bill will get more roofs over people's heads. They'll get more houses built. Actually, will I ask Mr Noel, Sir Noel Robinson. Sir Noel Robinson says this bill is the difference between 
500 houses being built in Papakura or not? 500 houses in Papakura or not? No, you actually, you voted against the urgency. You voted against the introduction of this bill. Let it be plainly on the record that you block those five. Mr Chairman. The Honourable Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Chairman, and I say to members opposite, you cannot have a wailing wall of concern about people who have, are under stress on housing and then come down to this parliament and oppose every practical measure that we bring to get houses built. Every practical measure, Mr Little, you have opposed. Because Mr Little and Mr Twyford are not interested in solutions. They're interested in terms of playing the politics, getting the wailing wall of their inquiry. But actually, when it comes to the measures that will get homes built, they're opposed. When you want to do things that will get houses built, they're opposed. And so I asked them this on this bill. Why is it that the Auckland Council supports this bill but the Labour opposition does not? I hear from Labour all the time that we should be listening to local government. Why is it that local government New Zealand supports the extension of the special housing areas but the Labour opposition parties do not? Do not. Well, actually, it's really strange. Over the recess, Labour said we've got to declare a state of emergency over housing. And then we come to the House and we say, actually, there's a really practical thing we can do to get 8,000 houses built, and we need to go into urgency to make sure those 8,000 houses are built. And what do they do? They oppose urgency. So can the next member speak for Labor and explain why do you want a state of emergency on housing, but why won't you support? Why are you a state of emergency? But why won't you sit down and do the hard work in this parliament, pass the bills that are necessary to get the houses built? Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair.